Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Today I am going to be doing my 25 week pregnancy update. I cannot believe I'm already at 25 weeks. I don't know if it's the coronavirus um, pandemic with being stuck in quarantine or if it's just that this pregnancy was so much easier um, than my twin pregnancy that it just made the weeks just fly by. So I am 25 weeks and three days with baby boy number three, um, whose name is Oliver. Um, if you guys are new to my channel, I'm Crystal and my husband's name is Corey and we have twin boys, Cooper and Sawyer, who are two and a half and um, now we're going to have baby boy number three. So I just am kind of going to fill you in on some symptoms, some cravings, um, some moments, just different things uh, throughout this pregnancy. Um, that I've experienced from the time I found out I was pregnant till now. So if you guys want to see kind of an update on my pregnancy, then just keep watching. Okay, so I found out I was pregnant at five weeks and I didn't get into my doctor until I was eight weeks. We had our first ultrasound at eight weeks and two days, I think it was. And again, it was before this whole coronavirus thing hit. So Corey was able to be with me and which was awesome. So that's when we found out it was only one baby, which I got so many questions when I told people that I was pregnant. <laughs> It is only one baby and that's when we found out that it was only one baby. Um, at my first appointment, we discussed um, any and all complications that I had with my twins, which um, I had preeclampsia, which is high blood pressure, um, as well as I had developed twin to twin transfusion. So at that doctor's visit, uh, we discussed my want for a VBAC, which is a vaginal birth after cesarean, um, as well as me needing to go see an MFM just to make sure that we can prevent um, any of the things from ha that happened with my twin pregnancy um, to help me not go into early labor with this pregnancy. So I was seeing a regular, my regular OB, and then I was seeing an MFM. Um, and so that first few weeks of pregnancy was seriously <laughs> the roughest weeks ever because I had the worst nausea. It was so bad that I could not function. I literally had to sleep it off because I was so miserable and I didn't want to take anything yet until I'd seen my doctor because I just wanted to make sure that nothing had changed and that everything that I had taken with the boys was still safe for me to take with this pregnancy. So I waited till I was eight weeks, went in, had my doctor's appointment, asked the doctor, what can I take or what can I do for this nausea? And she told me anything with ginger root because um, I didn't want to go the prescription route. I just, if I don't, if I don't, need it, I'm not going to take it. Um, so I decided to go the ginger route. She said ginger tea, ginger pills, um, anything with ginger in it really helps uh, with that nause nauseous feeling. So I actually picked up the Nature's Way ginger root pills. These were a godsend. Um, now I didn't start taking these until I was around eight weeks because that was my first doctor's appointment. And so I'll, I really only had nausea between five and like 12, 11 and 12. So still a long time, but I only took these for a few weeks because after I hit 12 weeks, my nausea was pretty much gone. But I would take two of these in the morning and it literally helped me stay not nauseous all day. I was able to function. I was able to go to work. I was able to eat because um, before... I started taking those. I was afraid to eat. Um, I never actually threw up, but I was so nauseous that I felt like I was going to. Um, so that was fun. <laughs> that is probably my number one symptom 
was just extreme nausea. Um, now, being 25 weeks, I do not have that nausea anymore. It's pretty much gone. I can eat and it stays down. I don't feel nauseous. Um, I do get indigestion, but I do not get nauseous. So the second one is extreme fatigue. I had extreme fatigue the entire first trimester. I was so tired. I wanted to take naps. I could not stay up past eight o'clock. It was insane i would put the boys down and then i would come into the bedroom and i would be out and then i'd be out till the next morning and i felt like everything that i was trying to do or get done i couldn't do i couldn't clean the house i couldn't do laundry i couldn't do any of like the basic housewife mom things i could not do because i was so tired and like physically exhausted so that's the second symptom. Now I have so much more energy. Um, I'm able to actually clean the house and do simple chores and not feel super, super tired after. I can stay up till 10, which I know to some of you youngins, it's not a long time um, and that's not late at all, but it definitely gives me a chance to have some me time before I actually zonk out for the night. So. It's been nice and I think I'm actually nesting at this point because I did a lot of cleaning yesterday before, oh, the boys are awake now. Shoot. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go get them and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. The boys woke up from nap and I got them changed and situated with a snack. And now they're just gonna watch Frozen, or Olaf's Frozen Adventure on the couch while I finish filming this. So if you hear that in the background, don't mind that. But as I was saying, I think I'm nesting because uh, I came home from work yesterday and Corey wanted to go out and shoot his bow. And so I did put so much laundry away. I picked up the entire house um, and then I decided, which is really weird, I decided to clean in between um, our screen door, or our screen and our window. So like that little gap in the middle. Those were really messy, so I took the vacuum to those in the kitchen and the living room, and I wiped down probably four, no, one, two, three, three out of six windows um, between my kitchen and my living room. So I think I'm starting to nest, so Corey's been making fun of me and like my little nester, and so I think I'm definitely starting to go through nesting, which I didn't go through nesting with the boys and I really didn't have a whole lot to nest because we lived in an apartment and our apartment was very small and kept clean a lot. So I don't really think I went through nesting with the boys, but yeah, so my energy's back up. Um, the third symptom that started early on was my boobs. <laughs> Um, my boobs hurt so bad that oftentimes I felt more comfortable wearing a bra and I would get so irritated when the boys would like want to climb on me because they hurt so bad. Um, now I feel perfectly fine. Uh, the boys can kind of like squish all on them and they're, they're, they're fine. I, I don't have the sore boobs anymore, which is perfect. Um, then what was the other one? I have nausea, extreme fatigue, boobs. Oh, TMI, constipation. Now, I don't know if it's because of my prenatals or if it was because uh, the boys were drinking whole milk for a while. We just recently switched them over to 1% milk, but just to save on money, we all were drinking whole milk in the house. And I think that was backing me up, but oh my goodness, constipation was a huge one up until about probably like two weeks ago. Um, I actually was having such bad constipation pain, but I called my doctor and I was so worried that something was wrong because it like radiated into my back and it was so painful. So I ended up having to take a stool softener, which that was fun. Um, but now everything's fine and I'm going normally, which is awesome. So um, this pregnancy, uh, so far, 
being 25 weeks, I have only gained about 17 pounds, which is really good uh, for the time that I'm at. Um, with the twin pregnancy, I only gained about 25 altogether. So, and that was at 32 weeks when I delivered. Um, so I'm estimating I'm probably gonna gain around 30 to 35, which if you guys can tell, I am all belly. Um, I really haven't gained any weight anywhere else. It's all been my belly. So that is the weight gain. Um, and then with the weight gain, um, I used vitamin E oil and coconut oil. Um, a lot when I was pregnant with the boys to rub on my belly to help with stretch marks and then I got a really bad pups rash um, If you guys don't know what that is, it's just a pregnancy rash and it goes away shortly after you deliver But it was really painful and so I couldn't really put a whole lot on it because it would irritate it So this time around I've heard people use the Burt's Bees Mama Bee belly butter This stuff smells so good. It's not so it's not too strong but it feels amazing. I rub it all over my belly, um, also on like my sides and my, on my back where I've had like some stretch marks um, just from excess weight gain or whatever, but I love this stuff. Honestly, I got it at Target. It has been like a little bit of a like spa night for me every night because after I take a shower, I will rub it on my belly and honestly, it just, feels so amazing it makes my belly so soft and I can honestly see uh, I have not really gained any new stretch marks it's all stretch marks from when I was pregnant with the boys so this stuff is amazing the last two kind of supplements or like things that I've been taking with this pregnancy are my prenatals um, I had a different brand before this but this is just the simple truth organic brand um, I take this at night because that is when I remember to take it um, mornings are a little hectic, especially with being at work and getting the boys ready for daycare. I just always remember to take these at night. So there's that. I was prescribed baby aspirin to help strengthen my placenta um, and to help prevent me from developing preeclampsia or also developing any sort of reason um, for my body to go into preterm labor. So I take this along with my um, prenatals at night. So those are like just my my two two things that I've been taking um, this pregnancy. Now I feel round ligament pain. Um, it's every once in a while, definitely not all the time. Um, and definitely some Braxton Hicks contractions. I've had those several times. Um, but as long as I keep myself hydrated, I really, those have been few and far in between, which is awesome. I'm not feeling a whole lot of those yet. Um, I have a lot of back pain, um, because I think he's sitting super low in my pelvis, which is fun because he found a comfortable spot on my right side and he doesn't like to move from that spot. He will kick me over on my right side. He will have the hiccups on my right side. It's everything on my right side and I think his head is just super low in my pelvis um, that my back hurts so bad and especially down into my pelvis hurts really bad too. Um, so I did end up buying a belly bandit band um, to wear when I work um, to kind of push everything up so that it takes the pressure off of my back and my hips especially um, and then more uh, to take the pressure off of my pelvis. So that's been awesome. But honestly, I seriously feel like this pregnancy has been a breeze. There's really nothing that has been out of the ordinary. Um, I no longer have to see an MFM. I was getting uh, cervical length scans every two weeks, but I got the clear that my cervix is not shortening, nor is it dilating. So I don't have to go see my MFM until 32 weeks. And then, with my or my um, original OB, I don't have to see her until 28, so I still have three weeks left until that. And then at my 28 week um, appointment, I'll do my glucose test. Um, I am arch negative, so I have to get a Rogam shot. I have to do my normal blood work and stuff like that. But honestly, I seriously feel like this has been so different compared to the boys. Um, I am gonna put a side-by-side -side picture um, 
of what I was 25 weeks with the boys and what I'm 25 weeks looking like now. Um, just because I'm interested to see like the difference and how different my body looks between the two pregnancies. At this point in my twin pregnancy, I was miserable. Every part of me hurt um, because of course there were two of them and I was huge and I just, <laughs> I was miserable. And now at 25 weeks with one baby, I feel good. I feel um, content. I have been a little bit more emotional um, and I've definitely been a little bit more in my feelings and definitely a little bit more um, a lack of confidence but I definitely feel physically better than I did with the boys, which I'm sure in the next couple of weeks that'll, that'll change as he grows and gets bigger. Um, some of the cravings that I've been having, um, not really weird cravings, but they're definitely different than uh, the cravings that I had with the boys. So I've really been craving pizza for like the first trimester, kind of well into the first couple weeks of the second trimester, I craved pizza. <laughs> um, every time I suggested or Corey would ask like what we wanted for dinner, pizza was like number one on my list and he was like, I'm getting so sick of pizza, we don't need to eat pizza again. Um, but that was like all I craved and for a while it was Marco's um, thick crust pizza. Oh my gosh, that was like my jam. Um, a second thing that I craved a lot of was McDonald's orange juice um, and hash browns from McDonald's. I know, not super healthy, but that's like I craved that a lot. Uh, now I have craved lobster tail from um, Outback Steakhouse. We actually had that for dinner for uh, celebrating Mother's Day and I know that you're supposed to limit like your intake on certain things like that so uh, we get it very few and far in between but lobster tail has been another one um, water flavored water especially the wild berry uh, kind or the mixed berry kind from the great value like flavored packets I have been drinking so much water now because that is so refreshing and so delicious to me so that's all I've been drinking. Um, sweet iced tea from McDonald's. That was another one. Another thing that you gotta limit your caffeine on so I don't drink that too much, but when I definitely crave it, it's like I need to crave or I need to drink it now. Uh, but for the most part, it's been pretty like pretty normal stuff. It's like if I have a craving, we will get it and then that craving will be gone. But pizza has definitely been a constant. Sweet tea has been a constant. Um, water, like I said, is just now starting because that's all that sounds good to me. I still drink my coffee in the morning, um, but for the most part, it's all flavored water. And then I think that's really it on my cravings. I haven't really had like a whole bunch of cravings like I did with the boys, which is really weird to me. It's just kind of all been what I want to eat uh, or whatever sounds good, then we get it. So. Corey's been really good about caving into my cravings and he really benefits from my cravings too because sometimes it's um, Olive Garden, <laughs> Fettuccine Alfredo from Olive Garden, um, but it's been like really random so yeah, those have been my cravings. A uh, staple clothing item that I have been constantly wearing are maternity leggings and a nice baggy t-shirt. Um, I love these Bella canvas ones that I get off of Etsy. Um, they are just the most comfortable and they are the most stretchy. So this is like all I've been wearing lately um, is maternity leggings and t-shirts and sweatpants because maternity jeans just are so uncomfortable unless I wear them for a certain occasion but I have barely worn jeans since we have been in quarantine <laughs> um, and since it's been getting nicer out I do have maternity jeans as well now um, if you guys are interested I could totally do a uh, maternity clothing like favorites um, haul I have several 
different brands um, of clothing that I have actually grown to really love after getting recommendations from videos that I've watched um, on YouTube. So if that's a video that you guys are interested in, um, comment down below or let me know because I would definitely be into filming um, a video like that. But yeah, so baggy t-shirts, maternity leggings, um, and sweatpants are like the three things that I have been wearing so much. I know this wasn't like super drawn out, but like I said, I kind of wanted to do this update for me personally and to kind of compare between my twin pregnancy and this pregnancy. So if you guys liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And yeah, I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.